Sarah Rector, known as the richest black girl in America, in 1913, was a young African-American woman who made headlines for her vast wealth at a time when black Americans faced significant economic and social barriers. Born in Indian Territory, or present-day Oklahoma in 1902, Rector inherited a substantial amount of land and oil resources from her family, which made her one of the wealthiest individuals in the country, regardless of race. Despite her wealth, Rector faced discrimination and racism throughout her life, but she remained determined to use her resources to improve the lives of her community. In this video, we'll explore the fascinating and inspiring story of Sarah Rector, who, despite the odds against her, became one of the most successful and influential Black Americans of her time. Sarah Rector was born in 1902 near the all-black town of Taft, in what was then Indian Territory in eastern Oklahoma. She had five brothers and sisters. Rose McQueen and her husband, Joseph Rector, were black grandchildren of Creek Indians before the Civil War and Muscogee Creek Nation descendants after the Treaty of 1866. As such, they and their descendants were listed on the Dawes Rolls as freedmen, entitling them to land allotments under the Treaty of 1866 between the United States and the five civilized tribes. Sarah Rector received 159.14 acres. This was a required step in the process of combining Indian Territory and Oklahoma Territory to form what is now the state of Oklahoma. Sarah's father, Joseph, was the son of Creek freedman John Rector. Rayleigh Grayson, a Creek Indian, enslaved John Rector's father, Benjamin McQueen. John Rector's mother, Molly McQueen, was the Muscovie Apothlyahola, who fought in the Seminole Wars and split with the tribe, moving his followers to Kansas. Sarah Rector's parcel was in Glenpool, which was 60 miles away from where she and her family lived. It was considered inferior in fertile soil, unfit for farming, with better land reserved for white settlers and tribe members. The family did not live in poverty, but the $30 annual property tax on Sarah's parcel was so onerous that her father petitioned Muscovy County Court to sell the land. Because his petition was denied due to restrictions placed on the land, he was required to continue paying the taxes. To help cover this cost, Joseph Rector leased Sarah's parcel to the Standard Oil Company in February 1911. B.B. Jones, an independent oil driller, drilled a well on the property in 1913, producing a gusher that began bringing in 2,500 barrels of oil per day. As a result of the strike, Rector began to earn $300 per day. Full-blooded Indians, black adults and children who were citizens of Indian territory with significant property and money were required to be assigned well-respected white guardians at the time. As a result, as soon as Rector began to receive this windfall, there was pressure to change her guardianship from her parents to a local white resident named T.G. Porter, whom the family knew. Rector's allotment was later incorporated into the Cushing Drumright oil field. Rector received $11,567 in royalties in October 1913. As word spread about Rector's wealth, she began to receive loan requests, money gifts, and marriage proposals, despite the fact that she was only 12 years old. Given her wealth, the Oklahoma legislature attempted to have her declared white in 1913, allowing Rector to enjoy the perks of her elevated social standing, such as riding in a first-class car on trains. In 1914, an African-American newspaper, the Chicago Defender, became interested in Rector, just as rumors spread that she was a white immigrant being kept in poverty. The newspaper ran an article claiming that her family mismanaged her estate, that she was uneducated, and that she had a low quality of life. This piqued the interest of national African-American leaders, Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois in her well-being. In June of that year, James C. Waters Jr., a special agent for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, sent a memo to Du Bois about her situation. Waters had been in contact with the Bureau of Indian Affairs 
and the United States Children's Bureau about Rector's estate mismanagement. He described her white financial guardian as follows. Is it not possible to have her cared for in a decent manner and by people of her own race, instead of by a member of a race which would deny her and her kind the treatment accorded a good yard dog? This prompted Du Bois to establish the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People's Children's Department, which would investigate allegations of white guardians depriving black children of their land and wealth. Washington also stepped in to assist the rectors. In October of that year, she enrolled in the Children's School, a boarding school run by Washington at the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. She attended the Institute after graduating. When Rector turned 18 in 1920, she was already a millionaire. She had stocks and bonds, a boarding house, several businesses, and a 2,000-acre plot of Prime River bottomland. At that point, she left Tuskegee and relocated to Kansas City, Missouri with her entire family. She bought the Rector House on 12th Street, which is now owned by a local nonprofit, with the intention of restoring it and preserving its historical and cultural significance. In 1920, when she was 17 or 18, she married local businessman Kenneth Campbell in Kansas City. Her mother and Campbell's paternal grandmother were the only guests at the wedding. Before their divorce in 1930, the couple had three sons. She married restaurant owner William Crawford in 1934. Rector led a comfortable life and enjoyed her wealth, with a taste for fine clothing and automobiles. She threw extravagant parties and hosted celebrities like Count Basie and Duke Ellington. On July 22, 1967, at the age of 65, Rector died. She is buried in Taft's Blackjack Cemetery, where she grew up. Despite her wealth, she lived through some of the most difficult times for African Americans in American history, including the Great Depression and the Jim Crow era. Despite the challenges she faced, Sarah Rector Campbell's story serves as an inspiration for many, showcasing that even in the face of discrimination, it's possible for an African American to achieve success and wealth. Her legacy lives on as a symbol of hope and determination for Black Americans. Sarah Rector's story is one that truly inspires, and on that note, we would like to shed some light on the what American society was like in that period of history and the progress that has been made since then. Racism has been a persistent and unfortunate reality in America's history. However, it is important to acknowledge the progress that has been made towards equality and justice for people of color. In the past, people of color faced institutionalized racism in the form of slavery, segregation, and discriminatory laws. The transatlantic slave trade brought millions of Africans to America, where they were forced to work without pay and treated as property. After slavery was abolished, many states implemented Jim Crow laws that kept black Americans in a state of legal segregation and discrimination. Despite these obstacles, people of color have always fought for equality and justice. The civil rights movement of the 1950s and 1960s, led by figures such as Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X, brought about significant change through nonviolent protests and civil disobedience. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 were major victories in the fight against racism and discrimination. Today, America is a more diverse and inclusive society than ever before. People of color have made significant strides in education, business, and politics. However, racism and discrimination still exist in many forms, and there is still much work to be done to achieve true equality. Thanks for watching till the end, and please leave a comment down below. We'd like to know if this story inspired you or spurred some sentiments. We'd also love for you to hit the like button on this video, and also subscribe to our channel so you never miss another update from us again.